Okay, I'd first like to um, start by talking about the economic hardships um, earlier mentioned by actually both of my um, opponent and my partner. Um, my opponent um, started saying that um, it shouldn't matter about the economic hardship and that um, it should, or I'm sorry, that it, it should matter about the economic hardship under the um, both parents' well-being. And um, my partner started to explain that women um, poverty level decreases by 72% after a divorce. And um, I actually found an added statistic that states that um, fathers after divorces, um, poverty level increases by 50%. So in the end, it's not necessarily about the well-being because the women aren't getting a proper well-being. Um, similarly, Similarly, um, Chris had mentioned that um, in the battle, the battle of custody is not always about um, you know who gets to see who more often, and um, that or about keeping the marriage together rather than separating. Um, it's more about good parenting, but sometimes you know a parent isn't allowed so much time with their children as the other. So when will they be offered that opportunity to give good parenting to their child if they're not even um, offered the opportunity to spend a lot of time with them in the custody battle? Um, also, Chris mentioned that living with each other, um, that people live with each other before um, marriage these days which I don't see how that would really um, support his side because if you were to be living with somebody before you get married, unlike the old times, you would be more sure of the person that you're marrying and you would have less reason to need a divorce in the future. Meaning that, you know, with our old law, the women that were marrying in their 20s without living with these men um, had no opportunity to know how this, they lived with each other, so they ha would have more reason to want to divorce, but these days there shouldn't be as much need in divorce. Which brings me to um, the idea that um, after this law was enacted, there was an increase in divorce rates. So of the 35 states examined with new uh, with the no, new no fault divorce law, effective in 1980, 25 states experienced higher than average increase in divorce rates when the no fault divorce law went into effect, and 11 states, 11 of these states, um, the increase was twice of the previous increase. So with that. Um, the no-fault divorce was supposed to, or intended to, decrease the high divorce rate, but actually within the 10 years, a decade after the law went into effect on all 50 states, it um, increased drastically. Um, on another note, um, by eliminating no-fault divorce, California will lead to a decline in fraud marriages, and um, this can mean under money, uh, fraud marriages for money, fraud marriages for citizenship. Um, I got this quote from Getting Tougher on Fraud Marriages from Time Magazine. It stated that Congress is convinced that more than one-third of the petitions for permanent residency is based on marriage, is based on marriages are fraud. And um, similarly, Elena Lopez from uh, USA Today stated that marrying a, a U.S. citizen is one of the easiest ways to stay in the United States within the country, once within the country's borders. So with that, um, with the no-fault divorce law, it's easy to um, get married to somebody, become a citizen, and then easily divorce because you don't obviously need 
a um, fault or, or a heavy reasoning why um, you need a divorce. And um, these, these cases, from the same quote um, by Lopez, she said that these cases of marriages um, of fraud are very rarely exposed, so it's very hard for um, the United States to find, you know, who's being fraudulent and who is um, truthfully um, getting married or getting divorced. Um, it was found in um, an article from People called Seven Wives in Ten Years by Richard um, Jerram. He stated that um, a man named Eric Eugene Cooper, he married seven wives in 10 years in order to in order to empty their bank accounts. So he would marry these women, get their um, private information for their bank accounts, empty their bank accounts, and then file for a divorce easily and then um, banish from their lives. So he would disappear without them knowing and then once they were, once he was gone, for about a month or so, they realized what he was up to. Um, so this is very, um, very um, obviously detrimental to the United States when it comes to um, the access of divorce is um, hurting a lot of people financially and it's um, hurting our economic system. Also, back to um, the meaning of marriage, as Heather began to um, explain, um, I found a really interesting quote from Glenn T. Stanton on the counter-revolution against easy divorce. He stated that marriage is less permanent and, solid and solidity than an appliance warranty or a commercial contract, which is very true, because if it's that easy to get a divorce, but harder to, um, you know, ha the an appliance warranty is more specific and more, um, you know, the rules are more stated, then something's obviously wrong with our divorce policy right now. Um, also, on, this, on a similar note, by Kathy Meyer on the no-fault no divorce, the pros and cons of no-fault divorce, um, it's stated that family court system now is um, not towards marriage like it was. It's actually towards the Institute of Divorce. Family court used to put into effect the protecting the, court, the sanctity of marriage, and now the main concern is to make divorce quick and easy and get it off the docket as soon as possible. Thank you.